Residents in the fire-ravaged Blue Mountains claim the government ignored their pleas to allow them to clear their own land. In Bilpin, one farming family says hazard reduction burns could have saved their property when the firestorm hit. This charred black country is owned by the Tebbit family and they desperately tried to save it. For two and a half years, Martin Tebbit tried to get permission to clear his land, to create a fire break and build a fence so he could run his cattle. But he couldn't get anywhere. It may not have saved us, I'll be honest. The, the fire may still have jumped it, but it would have minimised it and it would have given us a chance. Mr Tebbit wrote to everyone, from the Premier to State Ministers and then the Gospers Mountain Mega Blaze, did exactly what he feared it would. They were trying to protect the poor little animals and the various exotic bushes in here, but now pretty well a lot are gone. Mr Tebbit was told to go to his local council, but he claims he abandoned it because the process was too difficult. Now his land has been torched. Politicians have taken away our right to protect ourselves. His neighbour Brian Williams is a local RFS captain and volunteer firefighter for 52 years. And this Gospers Mountain fire has gone for 79 days and it's been extremely draining. I mean, you see a wallaby come out of the bush on fire and it drops at your feet and it's squealing and, and twisting and, and it's the sort of thing you just never forget. Mr Williams says it was a nightmare to get approval for a hazard reduction burn to protect around 500 homes in Currajong Heights. It took us over two and a half years from the time we applied to the time we got permission and to get permission, we had to engage our own consultant. His brigade got the go-ahead in August, just a few months before the giant fire headed straight at them. There needs to be some serious questions asked about how we manage fuel loads into the future. The federal government knows both land clearing and hazard reduction are big issues in these bushfire hit communities, but they also know that it's not a straightforward solution either. That's why they're hoping that with the agreement of the states, a royal commission may get to the bottom of it. Obviously uh, there's a conversation that needs to happen around land management, land use, uh, even building standards. Dozens of hazard reduction burns have been conducted around Bilpin and Currajong over the last decade and still the fire ran straight over them in parts. With bush this big and a drought this bad, it's a complicated balance. And Chris O'Keefe is at Macquarie Street tonight with details on bushfire relief efforts. Chris, there's an emergency call out for more housing for people who have lost everything. This is significant, Mark. The state government is asking anyone who has a holiday home in these bushfire-affected communities to offer them up to people who have lost everything. And importantly, the government will cover the bond and the advanced rent for these tenancies. So that's another hurdle that people don't have to jump over. And you have to remember that families are currently in evacuation centres. They're in very small motels because they have lost their properties and they need a roof over their heads. More than 2,000 properties have been raised this fire season and people need help. I've met families that have been living in cars, in sheds that are in dire need and we need to make sure that we provide homes and accommodation to them. If you're in that category, if you have a home that you can provide, we need to hear from you. And Mark, you can list your home by ringing the Bushfire Housing Assistance Line and that number should be on your screen now. OK, Chris, thank you.